So ladies and gentlemen, next up at the fourth edition of the CFO Executive Leadership Summit 2021 in association with CLEAR, it is now time for our next panel discussion on our topic, unlocking the power of people at times of digitization and automation, building a continuous improvement culture. Well, for this, we're joined first up by our moderator, Mr. Rohit Nayar, CFO Care India. Well, Rohit is a multifaceted, agile leader focused on strategic change initiatives to resolve business challenges and execute business growth strategies through collaboration with cross-functional teams. Also joining us would be Ms. Rakhi Aswal, Director, CFO India, Saxo Group. With over a decade of experience in leadership positions in the finance domain across varied industry, Ms. Rakhi has a strong grasp on various aspects of financial management, including technical accounting, financial reporting, statutory compliance, and corporate governance. Also joining would be Mr. Rahul G. Kedia, CFO and full-time director, Roshi Diabetes Care India. While a dynamic a leader with 18 plus years of experience in the area of planning, corporate, and plant level accounting audits, controlling and commercials, taxation, direct and indirect, company, secretary and statutory compliances and MIS. Also joining would be Mr. Rasik Santake, the CFO of Tata Unistore Limited. Well, a financial profession with 16 plus years of professional experience across multiple business domains covering 19 brands and multiple retail channels. We also have Mr. Ankit Arora, Head Investor Relations and Treasury, Arvind Fashions Limited, a finance professional with more than a decade of experience across all aspects of corporate finance, including capital markets, equity and debt, fundraising and financial management. We also have Mr. Bharat Agarwal, the uh, Director of Finance India and Subcontinental Diversity India. Well, regarded as a finance and accounts expert, Bharat is a qualified professional with an extensive background in providing key financial insights, support and reporting to assist in key business decisions. We also have Mr. Shishadri Savalgi, the finance director at, of General Mills India. Well, a finance leader with close to two decades of experience in Fortune 100 MNCs. And joining us also would be Mayan Kajaju, CFO PepsiCo joining, a result-oriented finance professional with over 19 plus years of post-qualification experience in large MNCs and in Indian companies. So ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, a lot of experience in our panel uh, joining us. And we're excited to kickstart the panel. With this, I'm going to be passing on the live baton to our session chair and our moderator, Mr. Nayar, to take it forth. Over to you. Thank you, Bhavna. A very good afternoon to all my esteemed panelists and all those who are connected here. Well, uh, CFOs in today's super VUCA world would need to be ever evolving as the role becomes more complex and challenging. Against a backdrop of spending squeezes, technical innovation, and massive changes in the organizational cultures and ex employee expectations, it is becoming a difficult decision to strike a perfect balance between people and investment and create optimal L&D budgets. Hence, uh, really excited to be part of this discussion where we are talking about the talent management in this world, especially focusing on the finance organization, wherein as per the research indicates that more than two thirds of CFOs now take an active role in recruitment and talent management because the performance of the workforce is critical for the business operations and results. So let me start this discussion uh, by asking. I think let me start with the first one. See, if 
if in the pre pandemic uh, scenario if anyone would have said to me my controller friends if they would have said that we would uh, audit we would do the book closing we would do uh, you would be signing the books entirely in an online mode or through a digitized mode i wouldn't have believed it right even the word physical stock physical count has the word physical in it and if you just take a step back what what did the finance do in the pandemic season what i think pandemic made us do is that it helped us leapfrog in terms of our journey of digitization and automation so that's the first thing which i noticed and this is true for not only finance processes but also business processes and almost every function did that even traditional finance roles ap ar controlling everyone everyone was under lockdown was doing work from home none were going to offices still we managed to do it so the first thing which i notice is digitization of finance as a function and leapfrogging in terms of its journey the second when it comes to the human part right i think pandemic has broken couple of myths and unsaid rules you know rohit when in the pre pandemic season work life uh, work from home was actually used as a tool for work life balance many organization would make a friday work from home just to improve its organization's work life balance with this pandemic we have learned that our work life can be as imbalanced as ever with work from home in fact many of would have become imbalanced because they had to work more as well so the first myth it broke is that work life balance is is something which can be managed with work from home the second thing is in terms of productivity i feel very positive that in terms of productivity with the entire work life uh, with with the work from home thing so two things will happen one it's it's very clear that we won't be going to the pre pandemic scenario 100% in office it's very clear it's also clear that we won't be in this 100% work from home scenario so what's true for every organization that we will be in a sort of hybrid model where even traditional roles will be revisited rethought can it be remote and when i say traditional something like the controlling function fpna commercial finance because business itself is getting more on an online mode versus being in the office right so that's the second uh impact which i see for the pandemic the third and the most important impact see i finance has always been a function which can completely zoom in into any business scenario and completely zoom out think strategy th- see the big picture i think what the pandemic has done is that it has finance always had a seat on the table when it comes to strategic decision making and st- business model etc but in the time of crisis i think even the stakeholders have acknowledged that finance plays a role of a thought leader because in crisis you saw us there were supply chain disruptions there were demand side disruptions organization itself was impacted so every every uh, nature of the business every uh, aspect of the business was impacted and i think finance in this sort of crisis was able to have this long sighted view and also take tough decisions in terms of tactical decisions to maneuver the organization through this crisis so i think the importance of finance in decision making in the strategy side of things has become more enhanced and in this pandemic so definitely i think one in terms of evolvement of finance we we have become more digitized i think the end state will be a hybrid model where traditional roles will will be different and third we will have a much bigger say in decision making if not we always had but i think it's it's much more acknowledged from the stakeholders as well i think those organization which has had a strong cfo or strong finance has done extremely well in this period of crisis 
right so i think this is what uh, i would say has finance has evolved into and in the right direction as well back to roy right thanks shashadri i think we would all resonate with the, all these points especially uh, work from home you know how is it <laughs> caused even greater imbalances wait uh, any um, panelist would like to add anything on that i can go uh, rohit uh, quickly yeah, sure. uh, ms shashadri has summarized it so well uh, just underlining few thoughts and messages which i take away finance as a domain has always taken different shape right from the time uh when people used to do the manual bookkeeping to the era of automation that we talking about this pandemic has pushed us to expedite the speed of that change which makes our system more efficient effective and insightful human element has always been and will always be an important part of the journey but with a different skill set capabilities and mindset if we are ready to make that change within us we will be riding on this wave of evolution thanks rohit yeah uh, thanks bharat that was really uh, useful uh, we now uh, switch on to ankit uh, as uh, you know we are, we are discussing uh, you know the talent management becomes very critical in this uh, new normal so uh, ankit uh, what do you feel what are the key skills and traits that a finance leader seek or would be seeking more and more in identifying and cultivating a modern finance talent pipeline Uh, Ankit, sorry, you are on mute. Sorry, apologies for that. Thanks, Rohit. Uh, and and you know, I'll just kind of take a leaf out of what uh, Shishadri just kind of mentioned. Of course, we are all aware about uh, you know uh, building a, a modern, robust talent pipeline. Uh, of course, needs to kind of be understood in uh, context of various. key uh, uh, you know critical questions which needs to be answered for an organization right all the traditional ones which is what we are aware of right you know where what kind of employees do we need to kind of hire to ensure that you know when the organization is ever evolving what kind of skills and what kind of talent you want to be needing where do you see your function and organization over the next about 3 to 5 years uh, and what kind of people will you be needing for for to to enable those uh, uh, you know uh, to enable that organization to grow and achieve those end objectives but what sheshadri essentially really said the entire skill set what you know we need to kind of find now over and above what you know i just talked about as uh, business enabling uh, you know finance function is is the is the fact around whether do we hire talent which embrace the change because you know we have seen the entire post pandemic world where you know we were completely thrown with a with a kind of a black swan which none of us have really ever encountered in our in our life span uh the entire uh, skill set with people who 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 take uh, digitization and automation as as a, as a, as a as a process which is which makes them lot more efficient and lot more productive and how how far and how quick uh, you know decision making they can do and all these new finance talent which is what uh, you know needs to kind of uh, happen you know and then when 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 business was in like a absolute uh, critical survival mode during the pandemic we need people and talent with traits like you know with people approaching the challenges with a positive mindset right because that essentially can have a ripple effect because you are so you know bound with negativity and in and around you depression you know people undergoing you know uh, unfortunate uh, events in in and around family extended families and then you know, you need individuals approaching a challenge with a can do attitude which can essentially help bolster uh, uh, bolster the confidence of other team members working in the entire uh, you know as, as 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 a team player and and what i would have really found and what i have also imbibed as a part of my uh, you know senior leadership hiring when i look back at uh, hiring in uh, team members under me is is the entire importance of emotional intelligence have become extremely extremely important what i mean by that is you know that unfortunately is a skill which cannot really be taught right it can be imbibed you know that has become so extremely important in a in a in a post covid world where lot of em- our employees and our colleagues really need just you know, a, a little bit of empathism to help them prioritize certain stuff which they may not have been able to kind of do because of the other stress work which is what they are going through and then of course let them be lot more resilient to the entire stress and anxiety around them uh the other one which is what shadri essentially really mentioned right i mean while finance has always had a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, you know a, a point on the table 
as far as business uh, you know taking the business forward is concerned but you know that has become even lot more important because in a time of pandemic we you know you are if you have a finance leader or a finance team player who can really think just not only finance but has the traits which is beyond uh, thinking about finance so basically in in the form of uh, strategic business partnership uh, and and of course uh, you know he needs to have a uh, uh, ensure that he has a credibility in the finance function which is what he is known for his core right uh, and and then along with that is what i would add is a person with a trait and skill which has which showcases the mastery for details because that's extremely important right in in we have seen during the pandemic where you know there have been such micro nuances which all of us as finance leaders need to kind of really go through uh, you know which can really impact your cash flows your profits your your cost structure every single part of the entire uh, you know uh, you know profit and uh, loss account really needs to be kind of looked into and then the last one which i believe is extremely extremely important uh, you know as a skill set which needs to be there in building a modern talent pipeline is each of our colleagues or the new talent which is what we are hiring view a crisis as an opportunity to improve performance in areas such as productivity and efficiency because that has become so important because as to what you know rohit you also said right i mean we are living in a vuka world you know you never know when when the third wave is going to come or the fourth wave is going to come this is this is no end right uh so you know in in that you know uh, ecosystem when you are living in such a volatile world you know evolving and you know you know utilizing each crisis and opportunity uh, becomes extremely extremely important so so those those are my key skills and traits what i would believe you know we need to kind of look at in building a uh, talent pipeline which is for the future of course along with the traditional aspects which is what we all need to kind of hire a finance talent for but yeah. to rohit thanks a lot ankit uh, you know i also often say this to my team that iq would get you hired but eq is the one which would really get you promoted so as you rightly said i think emotional intelligence is becoming more and more critical uh, in our domain okay so now uh, anyone else sorry uh, if anyone any of the other panelists would like to add on to yeah. what ankit already shared yeah uh, yeah ankit- very well said uh, the whole point right uh, obviously in the current environment of uh, digitization automation also d- data visualization and advanced analytics right uh, the whole huge data sets that is now you know making available to us in the digital format uh, where you know that puts us it's not only important for a finance technical skills but also digital skills uh, obviously we talked about rpas uh, you know analysis tools like power bi data structures sql uh, uh, a lot more emerging on artificial uh, intelligence especially the machine learning part of it uh, you know that has become very important to have that skill within the talent that we have um, also we look for analysis and problem solving as much more uh, more uh, needed skills than you know traditional accounting and uh, commercial acumen talent that we were looking right obviously finance function is now uh you know needed to provide those uh, real time data enabled uh, decision support very clearly right also uh, one point additionally on the software aspects as well we talked about eq already but one also thing i think uh, we need to also uh, as a cfos when we see and in in the virtual environment and work from environment becomes much more important as well is uh, both effective communication and influencing right uh, that was important but in this virtual environment that is i think far more now important uh in the modern day finance talent so that is just a few top ups from me yeah very well articulated rasik i think these are some of the really critical skills uh, uh, which uh, the finance uh, organization is really looking for having new talents uh, as we try to maneuver through these difficult such challenges okay so talking of challenges again uh, let's uh, now move to rakhi uh you know as we see lot of digitization automation is happening which again creates lot of insecurities and other aspects in the minds of people so uh, could you share some of those challenges and how a people first approach could really help addressing some of these challenges sure rohit thank thanks for that question i hope you can hear me loud and clear yes rakhi okay uh so yes uh, digitalization and automation does uh, bring with it huge huge opportunity 
uh, for, for the finance world. But at the same time, it presents us with a uh, few, few challenges, especially if I think of challenges, uh, the, the ones which are which really come on the top of my list would be, first of all, uh, the mental blockage that the, the that the people have. You know, first thing you talk talk about digital digitalization or automation of a pr process. Uh, people think of redundancies. People think of losing jobs. People think of um, of layoffs and whatnot. Right. Uh, so how do we handle that? So any any organization, any team which is starting on its uh, on its digitalization automation journey or which is already on it so the, these are this this one point becomes really really important uh, second challenge which i see is and i think uh, rasik was also talking about it the the skill set right uh, traditionally we have always looked for very very financial uh, technical skill sets uh, commercial skill sets now the, the way things are changing, the way finance function is evolving, where uh, automation is becoming such an important part of a CFO function, how do we get the right skill sets, right? Um, and then third, uh, cons uh, third challenge uh, which is presented uh, to a finance function would be, I think, the right budget allocation uh, for these kind of activities, these kind of projects. How do you evaluate? How is it? Uh, how is the project increasing the scalability? Uh, how is uh, a, a project making the process more efficient? How do you calculate that? And how much budget should go into that that process, uh, that activity? So I think these, uh, from from uh, from my experience, these are three major uh, challenges. Uh, and also uh, when you when we when you talk about people first approach, I think that is key to this the, to solving most of these challenges it is extremely important uh, when it comes to mental blockage how do we solve that how do we have the right kind of communication how do we make people understand that what kind of benefits come with these kind of projects how are we making the business more scalable how are which is going to in turn uh, in turn help the whole organization and every single person in the organization right how we are freeing up time for people to get into much more value adding activities from you know, previously very transactional activities. So having that kind of right communication with your team, with the people who work uh, with you is, is really key to it. Uh, secondly, when it comes to the skill set, uh, I, I think I, here I have a very uh, a, a point to make that, you know, earlier, IT teams used to have functional consultant, right? How can we integrate within finance team now the IT consultants so that this whole digitalization, this whole automation mindset is a continuous process rather than a one-off project. We have to imbibe that uh, continuous mindset within the finance team now instead of having a, a separate IT team for that. I think that would uh, become really important and it would really take all the efforts on digitalization of a finance team much more longer way. So um, th those are my views on this. And I think it's it's a very, very, um, very important uh, part of finance function now, the whole digitalization and automation activity. Yeah, well said, Rakhi. In fact, I think the CFOs and the CIOs need to be connected more than ever before uh, to navigate these challenges. Uh, any uh, views from any of the other panelists on uh, what Rakhi shared? So I just want to kind of add, of course, uh, you know, Rakhi made an absolutely, absolutely valid point on the entire uh, effect of a mental blockage, which people typically most of the times, actually majority of the times I've seen, I've had is that, you know, what will happen to their jobs, essentially. Uh, you know, so, so the entire, uh, you know, halo around, you know, making employees and colleagues understand that automation essentially is not going to make their jobs really redundant. It's, it's about how they, it's going to make them a lot more efficient and productive. Along with that, how they, it's really going to drive uh, a lot more better work-life balance. And and I just, another point I want to kind of add, of course, you know, as to what we all are aware, you know, digitization, automation, you know, we can put bots and we can put, uh, you know, RPAs to kind of do certain process, but essentially at the 
at the essence of it at the bottom line of it it's essentially the people first approach right which essentially needs to be understood that it's people who needs to drive that entire change and drive that entire innovation to take that business forward and you know you can put bots to uh, automate a certain process but what is this that process and end objective is going to be essentially it's people who really need to kind of define that and, and you know as, as what we in the previous question also we discussed kind of you know we need to kind of have a talent which essentially understands that uh, you know and and the role of uh, you know uh, evolving a finance transformation through a digitization and automation so that's that's something which is what uh, i would kind of uh, put it yeah definitely ankit i think uh, uh, global research is also indicate that uh, the most of the uh, digitalization and automation projects fail not because of technology but because of people so as you rightly said people orientation and buy in is very very critical so that uh, i think at this point i'll uh, switch to bharat uh, bharat how can we connect you know these human resilience organizational resilience uh, and you know the uh, to the entire sustainability uh, thing so could you share your views thanks rohit that's that's a very interesting and relevant question in today's time i would say uh, i i being uh, ambassador of one young world this topic is also very close to my heart so uh, let me give you a, a view on it last two years i'm sure have taught all of us the meaning of resilience and sustainability like never before everything has changed right the way we work the way kids study the way organizations operate and the way sustainability is looked at to start with uh if i ask in this forum people to raise their hands if they were not impacted with covid or their families were not, never impacted with covid or someone whose company or the businesses never got an impact due to covid i'm sure i'll i'll not have many hands up in the air who says that we were unimpacted we survived we bounced back from the worst ever adversity of mankind and that's that's to me called resilience this is applicable to everyone the people the organizations and the society at large human resilience is built on endurance physical mental it's built on the value system and not on the money and social status the plea is for care peace security and respect while organizational resilience is all about the ability to change balancing management of change between system people processes at the time of such disruption defines how a organization comes out of it understanding the psychology part of it is also very important as little things as providing ergonomic facilities to the people buying covid insurance staying with the employees in the tough times organizations which worked on the technology with a connected workforce thrive very well and will be the case studies in the research and research of resilience and sustainability so all these aspects are very well connected and complement each other a resilient human will work for the purpose that relates to him will work in the situation that gives him the choice and respect one of the leading pharma company came up with the policy of making a choice with responsibility this is something respecting resilience of the people flexibility of the people but making it a sustainable drive for the company and the stakeholder on the other hand a resilient organization will know the ask for the ask make changes which cater to the need of today without compromising tomorrow one of the leading oil company intending to convert the complete business model to achieve the agenda of net zero it's not only supporting the united nations sdgs but also taking the people together on this mission by making them the shareholders of the company and i'm not talking about the handful of the people i'm talking about a global workforce of 60000 people that they taken care of what a thoughtful connection of sustainability with resilience similarly a leading snacks company i'm sure you would have seen the ad use the artificial intelligence and enable the local retailers to make an ad with a famous celebrity of the country that's an example of building resilience with the people around so if we have to really unlock the power of people the organizations need to play a vital role in helping people achieve the level of resilience if your people are resilient they will thrive to make your system robust processes strong but flexible and make an organization which is ready for tomorrow a sustainable and resilient organization brings in diversity connectivity learning social participation and inclusive policy making which survives and recovers from the crisis without compromising on its values so leaving you all with this thought provoking message that let's let's not end this topic here let's 
spearhead to make an impact in this area, to make a sustainable organization and society around us. So with this, Rohit, I'm, I'm done and back to you. Yeah, many thanks, Bharat. I think that was really some profound th thoughts coming. So I appreciate that. So now I think let's switch gears. Uh, you also talked about uh, diversity. So in terms of diversity and gender balance, I think finance teams historically probably uh, not much focus was there uh, in these areas. So I'd like to bring in Rahul uh, now. So Rahul, what do you see the trends in the finance of in terms of gender and uh, diversity and how to achieve a more balanced workforce? Uh, thanks, uh, Rohit, firstly, for uh, this question. I think this is very sensitive and very closer to our heart in our organization. Uh, just to mention, uh, to start with, uh, diversity and inclusion is such a core on which we are working in Rosh on a global basis that we have formed a separate task force or a squad where even I am a member of it. So before getting into it, I'll just throw uh, some facts or the numbers which I got it in this regard. Uh, on a positive side, I find from a recent report that uh, published uh, from a, one of the research company that in India, in finance sector, predominantly to the banking and financial sector, the presence of uh, the females or our female colleagues have just doubled up, uh, close to doubled up from 6% to 14% count is there. But on the flip side, pandemic had taken it on the other side. If I look upon, uh, Bharat just spoke about how pandemic had touched upon everybody. I think, uh, and I can relate to it. And if I look upon a recent uh, uh, World Economic Forum's uh, report on a global gender status, India has not done great out there. India had actually slipped out 28 points and now we stand at 140th rank out of 156. Primarily reason why? Because when pandemic had uh, hit in, uh, all of us, uh, business, people, individual, everywhere, I think the major burden is taken by the female colleagues because they are expected to be or they are supposed to be managing both home and work at the same time and it's not going to be easy. We men have tested that in last 18 or 20 months and we find it it's not that easy. So many people do acknowledge we work for work for home while working from home. Many don't, but we actually all have worked upon. And that gives a very clear understanding what was the pain our family members, our female colleagues would have been going through all these times. So I think there was a clear dip where India has scored very low. And that is the reason the unemployment is rate has gone up into the females uh, on a higher side. And that puts a major responsibility on the entire organization and, and all of us are part of it. That how do we correct it back? Because some efforts have been taken in recent past, but uh, majorly it has gone in drain because of pandemic. So I'll say that in finance, uh, when we look upon, we are very clear that uh, they need to be a diversity. It, and it is very helpful. A proper balance of people really gives a very productive outcomes. And when I say uh, some of my panelists have spoken about it on the partnering and all, I think stakeholder management is one of the most forte which is coming up from the finance. Gone are the days of the custodianship and the controllership that we are holding on the books of account. No, it's like driving the business as equal partners. And I think in that, the stakeholder management is very, very crucial. And on from my personal experience, I would say females are in general born with a stakeholder management skill set. So that that is something I acknowledge. And when I look upon from my team, I'm mindful that if I have a choice, definitely I'll go for a female so that there's a proper balance in the team. So that is something what we do. And uh, uh, many organizations, uh, as I said, I was part of, I'm part of DNI squad. Uh, I see many organizations are working in this regard to increase the diversity, increasing the presence of the females, not only in the organization, but also at a leadership level. That is fine. But one of the big questions which comes to my mind is that, is that doing takes up the work or is not what we have to do to make the environment conducive for them to work more efficiently. So just by not putting the towns, say for example, in one of the MNC I saw uh, gender diversity, females were at 40%, males were at 60%. But if we look at a leadership level, then the skew is 25 for female and 75 for male. Best example is New Zealand. If we look upon 75% is the led by female, including the prime minister out there. 
so it's a very fantastic idea and i think there is a fantastic examples which if we replicate it solves a lot of problem and uh, i think uh, being a finance guy inside all of us we can only deliver when we can measure something and that is something uh, taking into account we are trying to build up some kind of a metrics organization with a kpi so that we are mindful whenever we are onboarding or building our team that there is a proper mix because otherwise good thoughts are always there but in actions they do not reflect upon so that is where we are trying to put into a kpi also that it can be 100% men they can be any reason why you can't find a proper balance yes few can uh, can be less in the beginning but if we take a frame of 5 to 10 years if we groom our female colleagues from right now they can be a future leader and i i can say from my experience i have seen that their learning path and the growth is very very fast they adapt to the scenarios very fast i think some of the skills of the leadership comes inherent to our such colleagues and that is something which we have to uh, give a nourish them and to help them to flourish that so and i think that's where we can see a lot of leaders last week or uh, early this week linkedin was uh, flooded with lena nay so why one lena nay there can be hundreds of such in coming days when i see the times of india news uh, headline in that there were hardly one or two female leaders on the top but may lead the men but i think the making is in pipeline now and in 10 years i think there will be a proper balance and the effort is to be done at all level from starting then middle management then to the senior management so that is something we are trying to do and we are mindful in all the years and uh, with that i put my comment to rest and over to you rohit yeah thank you rahul i think you really uh, hit the chord there so i think very well uh, said that how it's not only about just uh, having a number mix but also looking at you know how we can have more diversity and participation at the senior leadership as well uh, and appreciate all the work done by you and your company in this regard uh, so probably uh, uh, i think here also probably we don't have that right mix i would say uh, but uh, look forward to hearing rakhi's views on that yeah sure sure uh, rohit uh, i believe that you know i of course this topic is very very close to my heart um, Uh, I myself being a woman and I and and mother to a little girl um so I think not having the right kind of gender diversity is a business risk I I think so I I strongly believe that I think that you know when you talk about investments for example how you talk about diversifying your risks that's the that's one of the basic rules of investments right so why don't we apply that when it comes to gender diversity we are at huge risk um if we don't look at this aspect every business is at a huge risk uh, fortunately lately there's you know, we are hearing a lot of things being done but uh, honestly i believe it's it's little too late too little uh, yet and a lot more has to be done in terms of gender diversity we are far 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 away from where we should be uh, we um, just uh, just like uh, rahul just now said uh, we also have uh, in our company a similar task force which works on on gen- gender diversity and inclusion uh, but it cannot be a number game it just cannot be a number game um, and, and there is a phrase which is used you can't just invite people to party when they are not allowed to dance so this is this is the difference between diversity and inclusion uh, so at various levels how can you make your system more equitable no it's not about equality i think it's about being equitable here how can you provide right opportunities to women um, um, to to be able to grow to be able to reach that uh, that leadership position so you cannot have i i believe you cannot have equal principles here for male and female it requires a lot of a uh, lot of study it requires a lot of uh, thinking and then coming up with with something which will work well for females too but um, i'm sure now that a lot of companies have started looking at it we will see something 
something happening and uh, no i think i think it's moving in the right direction now but uh, we'll have to do something to catch up fast on this those are my views uh, rohit over to you yeah thanks lucky well said uh, you know, i really like uh, and you said you can't invite people to party and then not allow them to dance i think that's really sums it up all in terms of how we need to look at this entire uh, diversity and inclusion aspects right so uh, again i now move on to rasik uh, rasik uh, as cfos uh, could you share your thoughts as to what can we do to align our business plans and talent strategy thank you rohit yeah absolutely you know talent strategy can't be very separate from the business plan so important right uh, cfo actually uh, needs to make sure that all aspects of talent strategy including attracting talent uh, managing and developing talent retaining the talent assessing the talent right has become so important to align with the business plan and both on short term and long term basis right on all these aspects um you know this is also different across life cycle of the business and industry we work in uh, so we need to take that external environment into account uh, on both consumer market and competition right uh, so the first job for a cfo is, is to identify the stage of the business is in right and what is the business plan what is the source of growth and efficiency driver for business which is gunning for right for example if the business is young and we start to have uh we need to have a right transactional timing getting controls right uh, financial operations right whereas business which are stable which would have already achieved a lot of automation uh, may have a very high analysis driven driving uh business where acquisition of fund raising is a priority we need to have that in the talent strategy right uh companies where uh, business plans are towards driving profit and efficiency we talked a lot uh, you know uh, in other questions and discussions on automation and robotics it plays a so important role in improving processes um, and that also like in more transactional functions it can be la- far more automated like accounting operations taxation uh, revenue management etc versus more strategic functions where um, the business development risk uh, uh, risk management right uh, etc so where uh, you know automation can be done to a certain extent um and and later uh, stage of the developments all data visualization to facilitate the real time uh, financial information advanced analytics to uh, for for decision support and identifying those growth opportunities that becomes very important so this question cfos uh, need to align for all the aspects of uh, you know talent strategy like you know like on uh, attracting uh, and hiring talent right you know cfo should think about how they are going to meet those talent needs um do they want to encourage uh, you know a culture of predominantly promote from within uh, the organization versus external hiring it depends on which skill set we are uh, you know attracting uh, talent for or what is the specialized skill sets also on developing talent right the whole do we have a proper learning and development program uh, to groom the talent uh, towards the specific skill set do we have career development program you know to retain group that talent for the border roles uh you know that is the question that you know the whole on talent strategy that should be aligned with business plan uh, like for for us at tata click where we are in a e-commerce industry early stage of uh, both company and you know industries life cycle becomes very important to focus on both right to focus on automation hence uh, have the right talent to make that possible in the in the environment and with the you know constraints of the company but also implement visualization and set up analysis as a as a core of all decision making uh, right uh, also i think very important that is currently emerging is having a, a separate lean agile and flexible workflows right and that that workforce and that talent will actually take on problem areas on different areas and solves for them they have a short sprint of taking the problem solving in different areas and then moving to a different problem right and those kind of needs a very specific very different talent right so all these aspects right you know cfos need to work on identifying the whole uh, current stage of uh, yourself and then work on all these management talent management areas um, and keeping the digital at the core which is you know current topic as well uh, is becoming very very important so that's what i think so great thanks sir asik as you rightly said i think the role of cfo is fast moving from uh, descriptive to more predictive modeling Uh, any other thoughts from any of the panelists 
So, uh, Rohit, I think Rasik has covered it very well. Uh, but uh, just uh, one add-on from my side. Uh, the role, the the importance of CFO playing a role in the talent has especially in, uh, in talent development has especially increased uh, post pandemic, and we know that uh, literally all the organization uh, is going through a change, right? Because the skills or the business model which was there pre pandemic is not hold true good now, and in future for sure it will change, right? And what it means is that the skill sets or the capability required for business is different than what it was earlier. Uh, CFO needs to, or this makes more important for a CFOs to partner with CHROs or their HR uh, function uh, partners to, to work with them and identify basis the strategic plan of the organization, that what are the skills required uh, and how to ensure that proper investment is there so that you will build a pipeline uh, from a capability and skills perspective. So that's that's just want to add on back to you. Yeah, thanks, Mayank. That was really useful. Uh, staying with you, uh, Mayank, uh, what do you feel? How can CFOs impart adequate business partnering skills? And what should be the optimal mix of technical and these business partnering capabilities? Uh, thanks, Rohit. I think this is this is very close to my heart as a finance professional over a period of time. That how uh, what's the real role of a of a finance uh, function or a CFO, and uh, the role of a function is is changing very very fast. I'm sure you all agree with me. What was required five years back as our expectation from the function or CFOs is not holding true now. And obviously, five years down the line will be a complete different uh, thing with technology coming and digitalization, things are going to a completely a different way. So what, what currently is required or, or is that CFO or the finance functions is also expected to play a critical low role as a business partners, uh, as a business enabler, so to say. The core uh, finance roles or, the, or, or work is a table stake. That's given, right? Now you have to uh, you are expected to work or with your CEO or the managing directors on uh, delivering the revenue, delivering the growth and stuff like that. So uh, the, 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 the C-suite or the other functions are happy that uh, with finance functions as working or partnering with them in terms of uh, in the stewardship role or in the financial planning, but they now equally want a finance guy to, to partner with them in the decision making process to challenge the status quo to 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 be equally working on solving the business problem right so that's that's where the new role uh, which uh, is evolving from a finance function um, and so too as for the cfos uh, moving from a earlier of a trustee or a integrator uh, kind of a role to now navigator and catalyst as well so now in a current scenario as a finance and and i'm losing i'm using finance as a whole because uh, each finance guys one day aspire to become cfo so it it gets cascaded in that way uh, the role from a cfo or the ask from a cfo or a finance folks is to be a navigator to be a catalyst to be an integrator and obviously to be a trustee so that's that's how I, I see and that's how uh, the mix or is changing and uh, it's it's on the function uh, to prioritize uh, all the things and depends on the time uh, required you have to prioritize and work uh, from business to business. Uh, knowing the business code is very important nowadays. So if you if you are a finance, uh, you know what the business what the your hardcore finance is. But is this equally or more than important is that you go to the market. I am from a FNCG background. So going in my case, going to the market, understand what is really happening in the market. And then people will really listen to you and you will add value to the organization. So back to you, Rohit. Great. Thanks, Mayan, for sharing your perspective and how uh, you know the CFOs can really chart their journey uh, towards being the CEOs. Thank you. Any other views from any of the panelists yeah. here? 
yeah rohit just yeah. a couple of um, points here and let me share a sort of uh, slightly different uh, perspective more for uh, say younger finance professionals right i think see the fallacy uh, is to consider either or right so see business partnership and strong technical uh, is not extremes of a spectrum so see the opposite of profit should, may not be loss maybe even break even the opposite of white may not be black maybe gray as well right so i have never seen a good finance business partner if he doesn't have the strong technical skills right and you won't find a strong even traditional uh, controlling person or a custodian if he doesn't have a strong business understanding right so i think what has changed is see a decade back a finance person was a finance leader with business understanding sound business understanding but the core domain remained the gravity remained to finance within finance aspects now what has happened is he has become finance has become a business leader with finance expertise so actually the if you see the gravity has shifted to business and hence i see that it's moving more and more towards general management so in next decade you will start seeing a lot of uh, cfos becoming ceos even now we see that but again we see it in financial services etc where the core domain is still a uh, more sort of finance driven uh, enterprises but as we proceed like the one which you quoted hr becoming ceo it's i think it's pandemic also has has a role to play where hr has come to the forefront a lot in the pandemic similarly i think as in the next decade given that the cfo is wearing his business hat business leadership more and more you will see them becoming ceos more and more that that would be my perspective back to you rohit great thanks shashadri i'm sure all those who are connected would really be excited to hear these trends uh, so at this stage a quick time check or if there are any questions from the audience So, Mr. Nair, as of now, no questions, but we do have another ten minutes to go for the time check. Okay. Thank okay. you. Sure. Thank you. So great. Uh, thank you for uh, you know sharing some great insights here. Uh, I think in uh, just uh, you know in terms of closing comments. Uh, uh, Mr. Nair, apologies on cutting in. We just received a question uh, from okay. the audience. Can I intervene on the same? Yeah. Sure. Uh, so Monica asked that uh, speaking about diversity and its implementations, what do you think is the most challenging part of a DEI program, and how do we tackle them? How does a CFO or a finance team as a whole come in aid to it? So if anyone would like to throw light, uh, it's it's from our participant Monica or Samal. Uh, I can uh, I can maybe. Uh, share my experience since I'm sure. part of uh, DNI team in my company. I think uh, the major challenge is always the cultural alignment. So um, it it it, uh, it has to be uh, top down and at the same time it has to be bottom up too. So how do we bring about that cultural change? That change in the in the way people think about it. How how do people Uh, take it you no know, really seriously that becomes a major cha- challenge and it it comes with some time it it doesn't happen overnight so um, uh, that's the uh, that's the uh, ma- major challenge and how finance can really help uh, in this is again by uh, again you know uh, focusing on the business side what kind of business risk do we have because of not having a diverse and inclusive Uh, culture uh, maybe there that is how finance team can help uh, those are my, my views on that so sure. thank you so much on that uh, would any other panelists like to contribute otherwise mr nayar we'd love some closing comments from your side as well mr kedia you uh, unmuted would you like to contribute uh, yeah uh, just to add on uh, dni i think uh, it start as simple as from the job descriptions which we should have in the org structure and uh, whatever we want to put up on dni on the management chart 
it starts from there. That's the starting point out there. And uh, during pandemic, we understood that one of the common problem which we envisaged was that equal presence or balance between work and home. Uh, so that was there. So we have adapted to the physical approach. So physical and digital. So whenever required, you can be in office. Otherwise, you can be digitally connected. And uh, we have got a very extreme positive response from all our female colleagues because that really helped them to balance that out. The uh, early moms, uh, so they are able to give time to their child and also manage the household and then whenever required, they're in office also. So that's uh, one uh, quick solution which we figured out and we are going to live with that. So just one an idea I wanted to share with you all. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Keria. So, Mr. Nair, we're just a few minutes down the clock. Uh, we'd love your closing thoughts as well, since you uh, formulated this wonderful, uh, uh, you know, panel discussion. We'd love to know from you as well. Sure. Thanks. Uh, I think big thanks to all uh, the panelists. It was really wonderful uh, uh, hearing your thoughts and perspectives, and I'm sure all those who also connected, thank you to them, uh, and they must have all really benefited from uh, these uh, sharing of ideas, thoughts, and perspectives. And I think especially exciting is how, as finance uh, heads or CFOs, uh, we are driving a lot of changes within the organization and also in the overall ecosystem uh, in terms of diversity and inclusion, which is really, uh, it's fantastic to know. And uh, I really uh, am thankful, a uh, lot of learning for me as well, personally, hearing all the great initiatives which my fellow uh, CFOs are engaged in. I'm also uh, really looking at continuing this journey ahead and even probably accelerating some of these because it's time that, uh, you know, we finance people can really move from a test match approach to maybe now a T20. You know, we really need to be on the front foot and uh, take our organizations forward. So thank you very much, everyone, uh, all the panelists and to all connected with us this afternoon. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Naya. And thank you to all our eminent panelists for joining us on a, a wonderful Friday afternoon. It was great to have you. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, with this, it is time for us to take a